Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. We are still at sub sixty thousand uh, dollar price range for Bitcoin, but there are a lot of things coming into play, guys, that are indicating that we may be seeing the bottom here. So I am going to get into all of that, guys. Um, Stick around. This is going to there's been some news yesterday, especially with Germany selling and just how the market reacted that actually shows some really bullish and positive things. So stick around. Uh, but before we get into all of that, guys, um, I am trying to help out Flipside Sanctuary and help out support their animals. If you guys have a couple dollars, please consider going over to Flipside Sanctuary and donating. Um, their website is flipsidesanctuary.org. I do leave that link in the description. Uh, so go over there uh, right on their front page. You can donate there or you can go up to this donate, um, donate tab up at the top. And there are several other ways that you can donate and help out these animals. Very much appreciated if you guys could just spare a couple dollars and go over and help them out. Um, and it does help you on taxes because they are a 501c nonprofit. Okay, so what is the news? Um, yesterday, Germany continued their selling. No surprise there. Um, but this. This came in yesterday. It said just in German government continues to sell, dumping seventeen thousand dollars, seventeen thousand Bitcoin worth nine hundred and fifty one million, nearly one billion dollars. It's the largest single day Bitcoin liquidation so far. And uh, Germany is doing this just just crazy. What they're doing is they're dumping all of this this uh, Bitcoin on Coinbase and, and Kraken and all these exchanges instead of doing it strategically over the counter. Um, and it's just instantly affecting Bitcoin and the price. Um, now, this kind of cuts both ways, guys, because the the ETFs do their buying over the counter. So what what this all means is when when you do things over the counter, it kind of gives the market a little bit of a cushion, you know, some time, a little bit of time frame in between, you know, the actual buying and actual movement of price. And when you're dealing in lots of Bitcoin and, and just massive amount of volume over the counter is oftentimes the way you, you do things because you don't want to move the price and affect markets like right away when you're buying or when you're selling. And this is how Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy buy their Bitcoin. You know, oftentimes we don't know, we don't see a price movement until they announce that they've bought and it's because they buy buy over the counter and it doesn't affect there there is that cushion where it doesn't affect the price right away eventually it does but there is a bit of a cushion um so the german government is doing this straight onto the market which is kind of backwards you know we almost wish that the etfs would buy straight from the the uh the exchanges because it would shoot up the price and that would be great however it works kind of both ways you know if you're selling straight to the market it is going to dump it right away um but the amazing thing was this was the biggest sell so far as it says right here it was the the largest single day bitcoin liquidation so far um and it was, you know, nearly a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin was dropped onto the market. Now, I want to jump over to TradeView and I'm going to show you exactly where that happened. We're going to jump to the hourly. 
and yesterday we saw this red candle right here let me just zoom in on that a little bit better right here we saw price go from 57,200 down to 50 uh 54,997 so basically dropped over over $2,000 in this one hour and this was right when Germany sold so you know honestly a $2,000 move for a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin being liquidated wasn't wasn't that big wasn't that big of a move and this takes Germany down to basically almost having sold half of this entire uh, stash that they confiscated. And yesterday, yes, we did drop down that $2,000 in that hour, but it was quickly bought back up and we moved right back up to where we were before. So it, it just boggles me that, that this huge sell pressure we we really didn't see much of anything from it now there is is a few reasons for that guys um if we jump over here it says uh breaking us bitcoin etfs are scooping up almost exactly the same amount of bitcoin that is is sold by germany we are witnessing a real time intergenerational transfer of wealth between nations what a time to be alive so yes uh bitcoin etfs are buying the dip and they're buying up all of the the um the bitcoin that germany is selling so this is this is crazy plus guys we if you remember back a few weeks ago we had um inflows into the ETFs for almost 20 straight days of Bitcoin ETF inflows. Now, the reason I mentioned that was this was a few weeks ago. And as we know, the Bitcoin ETFs buy over the counter where they do have that little bit of cushion and, and it takes a while for that, that um, inflow money to work its way through the over the counter market and actually influence the price of Bitcoin. So a few weeks ago, we were having day after day, weeks long of inflows from the ETFs. And it's my opinion that we're actually kind of starting to feel that pressure from a few weeks ago. We're starting to see that pressure start influencing the market. And it's actually just um kind of counter balancing this straight to market dump that uh that germany is doing so it's kind of balancing things out um but the point is guys is is germany is going to be done very soon with their their selling and once we are through that guys there is uh there's nowhere to go but up. Um, but I want to jump over and just show you guys inflows into the ETFs really quick. This is over on Coin Market Cap, and if you look right here, this is the total net flow. This is for the last 30 days, but guys, right here, these last two bars, these last two days of ETF inflows have just been quite astounding. In, you know, we've we've seen some really good ETF flows. And guys, I've heard from friends that they are buying the dip and um, they are buying into the ETFs, which is actually just so good to hear because I can't buy this dip. And hearing that that, you know, you guys are out there buying the dip may it makes me feel so good because it's so discouraging when i see the small uh wallets and you know the the smaller guys that are selling out to to um 
you know, the big whales and uh, big corporations and whatnot that, that have hundreds of, of Bitcoin. So it's good to hear that you guys are out there buying the dip. I do not think you are. I mean, you're, you're going to look back on it as a, a very good decision, in my opinion. Um, another chart I want to show you guys is this. And um, this is clear back. This was our last bull run right here in 2020. Um, but if you look back in 2018, 2017, we put in this low. This was our, our very low point there. And 607 days since the bottom, we were right here, right before our big parabolic move up, guys. This was our bottom back in 2022. And we are now 607 days since the bottom right here where we're at today. So you can see just how soon, you know, yes, we may have a, a little bit to go, but guys, in the, in the grand scheme of things, we are right on the cusp of this big move up. So stay strong. Keep keep a hold of those uh your crypto guys because it is coming um another one i want to show you guys is this chart and what this is is it's mainly looking at the n u p l heat map down here at the bottom um and the n u p l is um net unrealized profit and loss from bitcoin and then on the top, you've got the actual price of Bitcoin. So what you can see is, you know, back here in 2020, 2021, we topped out in this euphoria um, section of, um, of this heat map. We, we have come down, you know, in price. We've seen that bear market. Right after the bear market, you have this stabilization period right here in this optimism um, part of the heat map. You come out, and then what it's really showing is this, this cup pattern on the charts, right? And you have these, these periods where we're in this optimism state. But really what it's showing, this, this one on the right was the 2017 bull market. And what happened was once we got up into this orange belief area, we did have this point where it crashed back down to this um, 40 level of this heat map, right between optimism and belief. And once we crashed down and touched that, that was this point right here on the chart. And that's when we shot up. Guys, over here on the current timeline what we've just done is we've come down on this heat map we're touching that line right between optimism and belief and so are we at this point in the cycle where things are about to go parabolic i don't know could be interesting chart to look at though um <laughs> shows shows some very big uh, bulls in the f future, guys. Um, uh, another thing, this guy's just kind of surfaced in the news, but 16 billion in stablecoin liquidity will enter the market. FTX plans to distribute 16 billion to creditors by quarter one of 2025. Now, the reason this is important is because this is stable coin that these guys are dis distributing, FTX. Finally, there's some positive news regarding FTX. Uh, <laughs> because, guys, when you distribute stable coin, basically what this does, it's kind of the opposite as what um, is expected to happen with Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox is distributing Bitcoin, which the thought there is that if people have Bitcoin, they have the ability to sell, right? So I'm not totally convinced that the Mt. Gox thing is going to be as negative 
of a thing as people are thinking because not everyone is going to sell their Bitcoin. I mean, I, I just don't think that's, that's realistic, but they do have that option. So it's seen as a, as a, um, as some sell pressure, the a possible sell pressure. Now, when you distribute stable coin, all that leaves room for is for people to invest that stable coin. People don't keep their money in stable coins for long guys. They usually start investing. So, um, the deadline for this decision from the courts comes in October and approval could see crypto surge because people are going to want to invest that stable coin money that they've just been distributed into something like Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So this, um, as this post says, uh, this aligns with rate cuts that'll be coming later this year and other bullish factors. Other bullish factors, guys, is, and we've talked about this on this channel for a while, the having um, supply crunch often takes five, six months to really kick in and start feeling that, uh, that supply crunch in the market. So other bullish factors is this is about when we should start feeling that supply crunch from the having. So everything is lining up guys. And this fall should be absolutely just rockets to the moon. I just don't see much, much else in the way. Now guys, um, there are some people out there that kind of think that that rate cuts oftentimes come with a little bit of short-term negativity. Now, the reason for that is because usually when the Fed pivots to rate cuts, it actually means that the economy is in the dumps. So when we go from, from stalling out on rate cuts to cutting rates, it of, often is preceded or shortly coinciding with a negative economic downturn, which could short term um, possibly influence a downward pressure on Bitcoin as well. However, turning on that money printer and cutting rates increases liquidity and that liquidity usually goes to risk on assets like Bitcoin. Um, there also is the argument that Bitcoin is starting to becoming, uh, to become a, uh, flight to safety or a flight to quality, like Larry Fink from BlackRock calls it. And if that is true, and if Larry Fink and BlackRock are influencing that mindset, which guys, BlackRock is a pretty powerful force. If that is becoming the narrative, even with an economic downturn, people are going to start looking as at Bitcoin as that uh, flight to safety. So either way, I think we're, uh, it'll be interesting to see how Bitcoin would react to an economic uh, downturn, which I personally think we are already seeing that guys, all the economic indicators despite the denial that the Fed is in with job numbers and, and all of this, I, I do think that we, you know, the stock market has kind of been buoyed by the overperformance of, of very few stocks and NVIDIA being the major one. But most of the stock market is actually seeing lows. You know, the stock market is seeing record highs right now overall because there are a few outliers that are just going parabolic, NVIDIA. But honestly, if you look at, if you extract those few stocks that are just flying, everybody else is actually seeing a downturn. So honestly, guys, I, I, 
think personally, I think we're in an economic downturn already. Uh, but we do have a few things coming out this week. We've got CPI inflation coming out Thursday, I believe, and then PPI inflation coming out Friday. So those numbers will um, could add some pressure to the Fed on whether they cut in, um, I think they, they meet at the very end of this month. And then the next, the next time they meet after that is in September. Now, as far as markets are concerned, there, the, the chances of us getting a rate cut this month, the end of this month is about 7%. So not great. However, that, that number could change with CPI and PPI numbers coming in this week. We'll have to wait and see what those numbers show. Uh, but the interesting thing is that rate cuts in September, that next uh, FOMC meeting, have a 70% chance of happening in September. So could we get rate cuts September? I mean, that's what is this post was saying was that all of these factors are lining up to just point to massive, massive bullish price action for Bitcoin coming this fall. So guys, <laughs> if, if you're not buying this dip, I mean, I, I would be buying this dip if I, if I had any money left to be thrown into it. Um, but guys, yeah, the price action right now is, is looking good. Um, now I want to jump over and show you one more thing before we close up on this video today. Um, we're going to jump over to the charts and I just want to show you guys on the indicators. Now this is on the hourly. Um, but let's see one, two, three hours ago on the hourly the stochastic rsi right here crossed up above the orange which is technically a bullish indicator usually i don't really care what the stochastic rsi is doing on the hourly but i'm going to show it to you anyways we've got uh this bullish bullish indicator looking good on the hourly but we're going to jump out to the daily. I usually don't look at this at the on the daily either. But as you can see, let me see if I can get this to scroll up. Maybe I can just. So as you can see, three days ago, we did have the stochastic RSI cross above that orange, um, orange line, the blue cross above the orange. So we're showing bullishness on the daily chart as far as the RSI or stochastic RSI. But the one I usually look at for this is the weekly. And if you look at this, guys, we have just barely crossed above the orange right here. So what this is saying is, you know, usually when the, when blue crosses above the orange, this indicates that we are heading upwards. So just another indicator showing that things, the future is bright, guys. Um, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, you know, like I said, there is just so much to be bullish about. Uh, one other thing, if we jump back over to um, coin market cap, let me just see if we can take a look at this. Usually the fear and greed um, index, and I don't know if it's gonna show it here. Oh, right here, right on the fear and inde uh, greed index, right over here, we are sitting in the fear territory. Now, the reason this is important is because usually you know, once we get overextended over it here into greed and extreme greed, that's when we're possibly looking at a top. Okay, that's when Bitcoin 
has the most chance of actually going down. Now, when we're over here in, in fear uh, and extreme fear, this shows that we, we have much more room to go up. So this is another indicator that showing things, even though they're not great right now, we have all we can do is go up basically. Um, now, yes, we can go down like the fear and greed index. You know, we have all this way to fall down, but we're in a bull market guys and going clear down here into extreme fear doesn't happen often in a bull market. We do see those levels uh, during the end uh, stages of the bear market year, but usually we don't move clear down here during the bull market. So guys, I'm excited with what's happening. Um, you know, the price action right now, we're sitting at 57,500 sub $60,000 Bitcoin right now. And you would think that, you know, it would be a depressing time. But all of these things coming out are very, very exciting. So hopefully this gives you some confidence in where we're going. Um, and guys, as always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and watching my videos. I know, you know, sometimes I go on these long rants and, uh, you know, these videos last always, always last so much longer than I intend them to. So thank you for taking the time out of your day um, to watch the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.